So we're gonna start by collecting our water samples. And we need to make sure that there are no air bubbles as that will <coughs> interfere with the oxygen levels. Okay, and so we're going to start by fixing the oxygen uh, right away so that the, yeah, the oxygen level doesn't change. Okay, we're going to start with eight drops of manganese sulfate. Okay, now we are adding eight drops of alkaline potassium iodide. Okay. Notice the solid precipitate that is forming. So we're gonna mix it. This bottle, we we will take it back to measure for the initial uh, dissolved oxygen level. And then next we go on and fill five of these bottles with more of the pond water for the next part of our experiment. So we're gonna continue uh, measuring the dissolved oxygen of our sample. Now we are going to add one scoop of sulfamic acid. Oops. We'll cap it <coughs> and we'll mix it to make sure to, to have all the uh, solid precipitate and the sulfonic acid uh, dissolved so there should no more no longer be any solid besides the the pond filtrate we've got our sample and there's no more precipitate left or sulfonic acid so it's it's a clear yellow besides the <coughs> dirt and pond uh, residue so now we're going to add 20 milliliters to a titration bar. Okay. To the to the titration vial we are going to add eight drops of starch indicator. So now we have a, a purple black solution. So we'll cap our titration vial and we'll fill up the titration pipe syringe with wait, thighs of it all. Okay. And we will titrate the sample by slowly adding drops and swirling at the same time. Once all the black disappears and we have a clear solution, then we will have the value to measure uh, the dissolved oxygen. Yeah, keep swimming. Okay, yeah, a couple more drops. Okay, there we go. 
So we have a clear solution now, and on our pipette it reads 2.25, and that is the value uh, that corresponds to the dissolved oxygen level in the sample. We will be using to measure the dissolved oxygen of all of the samples after we have uh, left them to sit overnight with the specific treatment. Okay, so we've labeled all of our vials, our samples, and the 100% light will leave it as is. The 0% light, we're gonna wrap with aluminum foil to make sure no weight can enter the water. Next we have 10%. For the 10% sample, we will wrap it with 5 filters, or the screens. And we will secure it with tape. And we'll leave the overlapping portion to the bottom. Next, we have the 25%. <coughs> light and we will use three screens on this one. And then uh, for 65% light we will have one screen. samples that we will put under the light on the side, making sure that the overlapping portion is on the bottom. We'll leave these overnight, and the next day we will measure the dissolved oxygen the same way that we did with the initial sample. Thank you. Okay, so we left our samples overnight, and now we will measure the, the dissolved oxygen levels after treatment. It is important to make sure that we measure the dissolved oxygen levels and fix the oxygen as fast as possible so then the results are received. So it is important to finish doing this to all of the bottles, these three steps, to all of the bottles and then fix the oxygen and ensure consistency throughout all of the samples. We titrated all our samples, they're all clear, and we recorded our samples in our lab books. The full, full light and 0% light are the ones that are the most important uh, for calculating the, and analyzing primary productivity of the lake or the pond ecosystem. So in order to find net productivity, we'll subtract the light value from the initial value, which we found earlier. To find the respiration of the ecosystem, we will subtract initial minus the dark or the 0% light. And to find gross productivity, we will subtract 100% light from 0% light. That is the primary productivity lab measuring dissolved oxygen in an aquatic ecosystem. Thank you.